Today, we're all gonna brush up on one of the world's oldest ways of preserving food. So your garden's bounty goes on your plate rather than in the bin. Full-time fermenter Adam James has turned his handy hobby into an obsession. A few years ago, he sold his cafe and started his own business, fermenting fruit and veggies. Today, we're gathering produce from Adam's friend's farm. It's the end of the season and these veggies are on their last legs. They're past their prime to sell in stores or restaurants, but they're perfect for fermenting. It's pretty good to have a mate that has a farm. Oh, it's amazing. I love it out here. Look at all this late summer bounty. We've got tomatoes, green tomatoes, a few varieties of heirloom eggplants. Yep. We've got some cucumbers down the way. We've got a few different types of chili. We've got some, some big gyms, uh, shishito, jalapenos. And then we've also got a glut of chervil. So I reckon we might add a bit of that for a nice little kick of aniseed kind of flavour through there. Nice. Sounding pretty tasty. Adam's going to show us the simple technique of fermenting raw veggies using just salt and thyme. So we're off to his place. Well, not a bad harvest. There's the haul. <laughs> See you later summer. <laughs> Adam's converted his place in Hobart to a small-scale fermentation station. It's packed with curious pots and jars of colourful ferments and experiments. We've washed the produce and have the makings of a fermented hot sauce. But whatever veggies you're using, the principles are the same. Bacteria already present in food with salt converts the raw veggies into a delicious, sour and easy to digest pot of goodness. What we're doing today is called wild fermentation. Um, so we're relying on naturally occurring bacteria and yeast, uh, which are kind of omnipresent. They're pretty much going to be doing the alchemy. They're going to be doing that transformation. Basically, we're just going to be providing a suitable climate for the lactobacillus yep. to thrive. Um, and in doing so, that's actually going to create an environment where it's inhospitable for pathogens. So good bacteria thrive. The nasty ones don't. So what kind of kit do you need to ferment stuff? It's really basic. We need good vegetables and salt. The salt is the preservative. And then depending on the vegetable, we may or may not add some water as well, in which case you'd use like a, a, a filtered, non-chlorinated water. Uh, but it's as simple as that. What we end up with is a beautifully preserved, nutrient-rich pickle, oh per se. Or in, or in today's case, it's going to be a sauce. So salsa. this is going to be, uh, what did we call it? The uh... say goodbye to summer salsa. <laughs> Correct, spicy salsa. <laughs> We've got a good 20 kilos yeah, yeah, of yeah. prime fruit and vegetables. And this is all we're putting in the compost. So, you know, we've got a few little offcuts. What's that, 400 grams yeah, yeah, out of, out of 20 yeah. kilos? So I think that, that's a pretty good ratio. And it's something the backyarder, at the end of that season, when you're trying to rip everything out, why not use it? Exactly. So the next integral ingredient today, salt. Um, so I prefer to use uh, non-iodized sea salt, but when it comes down to it, any salt's going to do the trick. Because we're making a chilli-based salsa, it can afford to be pretty salty. So we're using 4 to 5% salt to veggie weight. If you're fermenting chopped veggies like carrots, you'll probably use more like 2 to 3%. Wow. That's the biggest whizzy stick I've ever seen. <laughs> if I just had a little one or a food processor, would that be enough? Absolutely. This is just for uh, industrial quantities of vegetables when they come across my path. <laughs> Wow, that smell is great. Adam's son Leo has been tasting his concoctions for years, and today he's giving us the ultimate taste test. Alrighty, mate. Let's see what you think then. Hmm. It tastes really salty. Quite spicy. Yeah, it's got a bit of kick it's to very, it. It's very spicy, actually. Want some more? 
<laughs> it's passed the Royal Leo taste test and now just needs another sprinkle of salt on the surface of the food and around the edges of the crop. And that's just to discourage any kind of mould growth or that type of thing. There could be a little film of white which develops over time and that's just called calm yeast. It's nothing to be worried about. Um, it's just a naturally occurring yeast um, and can just be removed. So either just... Scooped off. Exactly right. Yep. People have been fermenting food in crocks like this for thousands of years. By the way, this is a lovely crock pot and you've got some wonderful ones behind you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually become a bit of an obsession of mine and it's fascinating for me wherever I've travelled that, you know, in the fermentation world, they all come with their own incredible crocks. You know, yeah, in Korea, they call them ongi. There's many different shapes and designs, but what a beautiful thing. But if I don't have something as gorgeous and big as this, can I use a jar? Absolutely. These work really, really well. When, when vegetables ferment, they do release carbon dioxide, so it will build in pressure. So with something like this, it is important just to give it a burp every now and then. So I'd say once a day, just to release the carbon dioxide, but then otherwise we're not letting oxygen get inside. The longer you let it ferment, the more acidic it's going to get, the more sour it's going to get. I like to let my ferments generally go quite acidic because for me, that's where all of that, those beautiful layers of flavour really come from. And at a month also when, if you're talking about, you know, the probiotics and, you know, the health side of things, the three weeks to a month is generally when it starts to sing. But I will check them on a weekly basis as we go. I've never made two ferments the same. There's no fixed ratio or recipe that you have to adhere to. Um, and for me, that's the fun part. It's, it's creating something new and absolutely delicious. In Australia, on average, we waste 20% of the food we buy. That's one bag of groceries in every five that never makes it into our mouths. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got a big veggie garden. Fermenting is a retro skill worth bringing back. So why don't you try whipping up a jar full next time you're doing your big fridge clean out?